Well, good morning, my Pleasant Hill family and all of those who decided to join in with us this morning on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining in, for tapping in to hear what the Lord will say on this morning. Thank you so much. I pray you have had a wonderful weekend. I pray you are enjoying this cold weather, this rainy weather. But I thank God that the blood is still flowing warm in our veins. Amen. I thank God because he is still our God and he is a great God. Amen. So we just bless the name of the Lord on this morning. So right where you are, amen, in your living rooms, in your dining rooms, in your bedroom, will you give God some praise just for being God? Will you put your hands together and begin to saturate the area that you're in, amen, that you can begin to invite God's presence right in that space, amen? Will you just put away all hindrances, all distractions, and anything that will hinder you from being able to praise the Lord and hear what God will say on this morning? God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we lift you up this morning. Because you are our God and we say thank you God for loving us God. For waking us up this morning in our right mind and with the activities of our limb God. And giving us a mind to run on and to serve you. So God we thank you. Glory to your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will give him praise. Glory to God. I will bless his name. Glory to God. With all that is in me I will bless the name of the Lord. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we get started this morning, man, I do want to say, I do want to say thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for those of you who went out and cast your vote. Your voice was heard, amen. Your voice was heard, and it is already making a difference. So I cannot... Uh, thank you enough. I cannot take my hat off to you enough to say thank you for what you have done in this state of Georgia, amen, to make a difference. A hallelujah, amen. And we want to thank you for doing your part in making this come to fruition. So we thank God for all that has been done, for all that is going on right now, and all the blessings we shall see in the future. I'm looking for brighter days, amen. I'm looking for brighter days and better days, amen. And I pray, and I pray, amen, that God will continue to do what only God can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, before we go forward, amen, I do want to say uh, my prayers and my condolences go out to those um, members of ours, amen, who have lost a loved one. Uh, we know we had several uh, family members um, who were uh, deceased, and we want you to know that our prayers are with you, amen that our condolences and our sympathy go out to the families, amen. And we just want you to know that if there's anything that we can do for you, other than just continue to pray and lift you up, amen, and be with you through this grieving, this morning season, please let us know, please let us know. And we will definitely reach out to you, amen, and be there in this needed time. Well, God bless you. Stay strong and know that God makes no mistakes. And he is still God and he is still in control. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let us pray this morning, then we're going to jump right into the Word and hear what the Lord will say to us on this second Sunday morning in this brand new year, 2021. Father God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this hour. God, we thank you already for what you will say and for what you will do. We thank you, Lord God, even for the cool air that blows this morning, Lord God, and for the sun that's peeking through the clouds, Lord God. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your people, God, who got out of the bed this morning, God, got breakfast and ready to hear your word, God, who have prepared and set aside time that they can be in tune with what you would say on today. So, God, I ask that you would take me down into your storehouse, give me perfect recall of scriptures, give me illustration, and give me direction that I may be able to impart your word unto your people. God, bless your people on this morning, Lord God, in a special way. These are all blessings we ask in your God and Son, Jesus' name. It is in his name we do pray, and the people of God said, Amen. Well, amen, amen, and amen. Grab your Bibles or grab your electronic devices and go with me to Hebrews. Praise you the Lord. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Reading only the first and second verses. Um, in my teaching, amen, I'll be in that third verse as well as some additional parts of the fourth verse. But just for reading's sake this morning, I'm going to be reading Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses one and two. Will you there signify by giving me some thumbs up? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And you will find these words written. Let us therefore fear, 
lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preach did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now this morning I want to talk to you from a simple topic that's called mixed with faith. Hallelujah. Mixed with faith. Now this is going to be a little bit challenging, amen, for some because we know what faith is and we've had some teaching on faith. Um, and over these next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about the word and we're going to be talking about faith, um, especially in our Bible study hour. But I pray that this word will prick your heart and open up your heart to some greater understanding about what it means to have mixed in with faith. Hallelujah. Mixed with faith. Now, now, let me just say this. If there's nothing in your faith that disturbs you, if there's nothing in your faith that intimidates you, if there's nothing in your faith that humbles you, or if there's nothing in your faith that makes you uh, drop down on your knees, then the first thing I would say is you probably don't have real faith. Uh, faith is challenging. Faith is um, something you have to work with and fight for and, 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 and something you have to make sure that you are always trying to ensure that it's a part of who you are. Faith is a struggle. Yes, yes God. And, and, and faith is a conflict. Faith challenges where I am with where I ought to be. Come on, somebody. I, I want you to understand this morning that um, between what I feel and what God called me to do is a struggle. Between what I want to do and what I'm hearing God say I ought to be doing, faith has a gap in there that pulls me in both directions and I'm trying to figure out which one's going to win. Uh, Paul says something like this. He deals with the holy you and the human you or the spirit you and the flesh you. Over in Romans, the seventh chapter, around about verses 14 and following, Paul goes forward to say, For I know that in me, he's talking about in the flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul is trying to explain to us that there's a battle, that there's a war going on with my flesh and with my spirit. And when I want to do good, something's putting me to, to do wrong. When I know I shouldn't do wrong, but something's fighting with me and warring with me. And that struggle goes on day in and day out. I wish I could get up and say, well, no, there's no struggle. There's no fight. I'm totally committed. Even being committed, there is still a war. Even being committed, there's still a struggle. Even being totally committed, there are still challenges. Glory to God. It would be good for us to say, well, this vision I have of where this perfect person, this wonderful person ought to be, by faith, I have not yet attained what God called me to be. I would love to say I'm all that I'm, I'm supposed to be, but even in pastoring, even in ministry, I know that I'm still working toward perfection in God. There's a lot more to me than what do I see? Glory to God. I'm not yet all that God has called me to be, but I'm working toward perfecting and performing all the promises that God has called me to. Uh, yes, God, I'm, I'm going to help somebody because even when Paul was talking, he said, I'm fighting on a regular basis to try to do what's right. And even when I try to do what's right, wrong is in me. The flesh is something that a part of you. And there's no way to get rid of it, but you have to learn how to deal with it. You have to learn how to live with it. Yes, God. It's like a uh, Twins struggling in the womb that's constantly fighting and you cannot abort one and, and save the other. You got to be willing to push through both of them. Yes, God. The Bible says that the wheat and the tare grow together. 
and he'll do the separating in the end. Um, because if you try to put out the tear, you'll also destroy the wheat. So one benefits the other, even though it's a challenge, even though it's a struggle, they are both beneficial for you. They both have a purpose. Yes, God. And the reason I say that is because um, the barking of some of my haters helps to keep me on the right track. If, if you wasn't barking so loud, I wouldn't know where the treasures was. But because you were barking, now I understand and see where the treasures are hidden because the haters are barking. Makes me love God more and follow God more. And it assures me that, that I'm on the right track to holiness because you keep barking. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Let me go a little further by saying if... Um, if the Holy Whitaker could kill the, the human Whitaker, it seemed like I'd be better off. If the Holy Me could kill off the, the, the human me, it seemed like I, I, I'd be a better person. But, but let me share this with you um, because the human me adds flavor to the Holy Me. Uh, somebody, somebody missed that. Um, if, if you take a juicy T-bone steak and you cut off all the fat, you destroy or you mess up the steak because the fat adds flavor to the steak. When you remove all the fat, you will have a pretty steak, but it won't have any flavor. Ask a good cook about that. You, and the fat adds flavor, even though you say we don't need the fat, you got to be careful because the fat has a portion of preference in what we're doing. It adds flavor to the meat. Just like your human self adds flavor to your holy self. Yes, God. Yes, God. The human me, it helps to give holiness uh, and, well, humility to holiness. Glory to God. If I wasn't human, I may not be uh, having any humility. Some of y'all so holy, you don't have any human good. Or earthly good. You're looking toward heaven and you you ain't beneficial right here on earth. Glory to God. So you gotta have both parts of you working together to benefit yourself and humanity. Well, my brothers and my sisters, um, this struggle that's on the inside of us it has something to do with the struggle that's on the outside. When I'm struggling on the inside or with things that's internal, it begins to seep on the outside and then you can see my struggles on the outside because of what I'm dealing with on the inside. And I share that with you because even in our Bible it says that we are supposed to be getting to a point of rest. The Bible was talking about uh, Canaan, the children of Israel going into Canaan, the promised land, and being able to rest. But there's more than just one type of rest. Even in our scriptures, you know, there's a Sabbath rest. Yes, God. Even if you look farther or deeper, there's an eternal rest. And then if I could just help somebody, if I could stop dealing with all the struggles in life and have some peace, there's a today rest. God can give you rest for today. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. My brothers and my sisters, I just want to tell you that most of us are living in some type of wilderness. As the children of Egypt or Israel went through the wilderness to get to the promised land, most of us, we deal with some type of wilderness on a daily basis. Uh, I, I know some of you may not agree with me, but, but guess what? Guess what? Your wilderness is where nothing grows. You've been trying to get somewhere, you've been trying to do some things, and ain't nothing happening, and you don't realize it, but that's a wilderness. Um, your wilderness is where it seems like there's some loss. Or there's some loneliness. Or there's some isolation. And so even though you may not you may not agree, it's a wilderness because there's loss there. There's loneliness there. There's depression there. There's uneasiness there. And that's a wilderness whether we realize it or not. Ah, I will go further to say that your wilderness for a lot of us is the fact that we're thirsty for something. And it's not being fulfilled. You're hungry for something. 
and your appetite is not being quenched. That's a wilderness. Um, and when you're in a wilderness, there is no rest because your mind and your spirit is constantly running trying to figure out how do I deal with this wilderness? Some of you think you're at rest, some of you think you're at peace, but, but I can guarantee you if you buy a lazy boy chair and scoot it all the way back, <laughs> your wilderness will disturb your rest. Uh, let me go further. You go out and get you a CD pasta pig with memory foam and an electric blanket. Lay down and think you're going to get a good night's sleep, but your wilderness will disturb your sleep. Ah. The, the writer this morning, the writer this morning warns us that um, if we don't learn from those who go before us, we will die in the same spot that they did. Ah, that, that, that's deep. If, if we don't learn from our ancestors, if we don't learn from our forefathers, we'll follow the same pattern, we'll follow the same path, and we will die in the same spot that they died in. So it's our responsibility to learn from their mistakes, to learn from their givings, to learn from all the things they're experiencing so that we can do better as we go forward. My children shouldn't make the same mistakes I made because they ought to learn from me. Uh, my, my children shouldn't stop in the same spot I stop in because the path I laid should propel them to be able to move forward or to go forward. If they learn from their ancestors, if they learn from their forefathers, they should be able to do better than we did. Hallelujah. We should be able to do better than our forefathers or than our parents. Praise the Lord. But the, the Bible warns us that if you don't learn from that, you will die right there. Uh, my daddy was a whole monger, so I'm going to just be a whole monger and die like he did. My mama was a lady the other night and had a revolving door coming and going, so I'm a Live like she lived and but died like she did. My daddy was an alcoholic and didn't go to church and didn't learn nothing. So, so rather than me learning from him, I'm going to do what he did and die like he died. The Bible said, let me warn you against that. Learn from those who have gone before you so that your life will be better than theirs. Yes, God. Don't make the same mistakes that other folk made. You don't have to put your hand on the stove to know it's hot when somebody told you that the stove will burn. But I know sometimes we got to do it by ourselves to learn our own lesson. But once we do it, we say we would have been better off if we hadn't listened because it showed did burn. Hallelujah. Let me go a little further because in our text, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the, the first verse, it says this. Let us therefore fear. Let us therefore fear. Now that's odd, that's strange, um, because we're used to hearing God tell us something like, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. That, that would be 2 Timothy uh, 1 7. So why is the scripture telling us to let us fear when God says to us in most cases, don't fear, don't be afraid, be thou not dismayed. Watch this, watch this. In Joshua 1 and 9, he says this. Do not fear, neither be thou dismayed, because I am with you whithersoever you go. So if Joshua 1 and 9 tells us that and God is, is constantly saying to us, do not fear. Why is the scripture here in Hebrews telling us, let us fear? It, it sounds like it's a, a contradiction, but, but it's not. Watch this, watch this. It, it, there's no contradiction. When the word tells us to let us fear, it's a collection.
collaboration of truth. Ah. A collaboration of truth is, is something that God commands you to be afraid of and other things he commands you to not be afraid of. He's speaking a collaboration of truth to us this morning because he shares with us, even as he did in Jeremiah 1 and 8, do not be afraid of their faces. Fix your face like a flint. He says specifically, do not be afraid. Hallelujah. You can't lead men and teach men if you are afraid of men. You can't be a successful uh, a leader if you are afraid of people. Uh, that's just food for thought. Because people will cause you to run away or to be afraid of your God-given gifts and talents and where God has called you to, they'll be pushing you from. So you can't be afraid of men and you can't be afraid of their faces. So the Bible says, don't be afraid of now one of them. Nary one of them, my grandma used to say. Hallelujah. God helps us to be able to deal with it because we've learned time and time again when I listen to folk, everybody that's in my ear, everybody that I'm hearing, it's not beneficial for me. So I have to hear what the Spirit is saying if I plan to be in tune with the Word of God. And so it says, let us, let us fear. Let us, let us be afraid. The text tells us there's things that we ought to be afraid of. Ah. Even though it tells us there's a lot of things we should not be afraid of, in today's text, it tells us there are some things that we ought to be afraid of. Watch this, watch this. He says that you ought to be afraid that you would live and die and not receive what God has promised you. You ought to be afraid of that. That, that you were born and you lived a full life and you died. But you did not receive that which God had promised for you. You ought to be afraid, to, afraid of that. That ought to scare you right out of your seat. Because I would always tell people, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I've dealt with cancer and gone through those processes and it was a little nerve-wracking and had a little anxiety, but I said, for God I live and for God I die. If it's my time, it's just my time. So, so, so I would always tell people, I'm not afraid of death. Glory to God. But even as I watch this pandemic, even as I watch these numbers as they spike up and down, and, and even now after these holiday seasons, as the numbers continue to grow, Right here in the United States, over 365,000 folk have died. Life cut short because of this pandemic. Worldwide, over 2 million folk. Life cut short because of this pandemic. And so it ought to put us a little uneasy, but at the same time, you can't be afraid, you. You can't be scared. So I tell folk, I'm not afraid of death as long as I live first. Ah, I'm not afraid of death as long as I have an opportunity to live first. And once I've lived, God can take me on home. But I would be afraid to die and not accomplish what God has called me to do. I would be afraid to die and not have achieved God's promises and God's purpose for my life. That scares me to death. That God gave me an opportunity to live, yet I didn't fulfill his promises. Gave me a chance to live, and yet I didn't fulfill the purpose for my life. I'm afraid of that. God, I want to accomplish everything that you assigned to me. Everything that you called me to be God, I want to, I want to be that. And glory to God. So I'm not afraid of death 
as long as I can live first. And once I've lived, once I've ran this race, the Bible says there's a crown of righteousness that's laid up for me. Glory to God. I can go on and be with the Lord. The glory, hallelujah. For well, every day will be Sunday and every, woo, woo, and every feast will be meal. God, we bless you. Sometimes people say things like this. I can't live because of fear of rejection. I can't live because of fear of what other folk are going to say. I can't live because of fear of my circumstances or my sins. I can't live because people often misunderstand me. Hard to live my life sometimes even because of fear of myself. That's what people say. And I tell you this morning, I warn you this morning, you cannot be afraid of men in their faces. You cannot be afraid of what people might say. You got to know who you are. Know who God called you to be. And be who God called you to be. Glory to God. Most people live and die in this wilderness of uncertainty. Ah, yes God. In a wilderness of uncertainty because they're not sure that God said it. Or that I should be doing it. Or what I should be doing. It's a wilderness of uncertainty. And I tell you this morning. That when you are not sure. You will not move. So I want to caution you this morning. If I were you. I would move on a possibility. If I were you. I would move on a maybe. If I were you. Even if I wasn't 100% sure, I would take a chance on God. Hallelujah. I know you're saying something like this. You would have built it, but you was not sure. You, 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 you would have done it, but, but, but you wasn't sure. You would have you seized it, but, but you wasn't sure. You could have had it all, but you wasn't sure. Glory to God. Your fear is your enemy. And it's keeping you from accomplishing the things that God called you to accomplish. Live your whole life but didn't accomplish your purpose. Live to be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, even 100 years old and didn't accomplish what God called you to do. Oh, I get nervous sometimes because I talk to pastors on a weekly basis. And some of them are so lonely and so afraid because they don't know if they're doing all that God called them to do. Folk telling them to do one thing and pulling them to do another thing and, and, and they're afraid that I want to make people happy but I don't know if at the same time I'm making God happy. My response is always, please God. Do all you can to please God. And in pleasing God, people ought to be pleased. And if people ain't pleased, let them take that up with God. But live a life that's pleasing unto God. Even as I talk to some of the elderly and some of the ones in the nursing home, um, I hear them saying something like this, that um, um, I wish I could have done a little more. I, I, I wish I could have stretched out a little more. Now they're old and feeble and on their beds and can't do much. And, and their thought is, I wish I had a try a little harder. When I was younger, when I was stronger, I, I know I could have did more, but for some reason I, I just stopped there. And now as I reflect and now as I look back, I say, I, I, I could have done more. I, I could have pushed a little farther. I could have stretched a little farther. Wish I had a little more time that I could accomplish more work but at this time my body is old and rocking with pain and feeble and I can't do much but I wish I had done. And so 
I want to encourage us this morning, even as far as warning us this morning, do all that God called you to do. Be all that God called you to be. Don't settle for mediocrity. Ah, there's a lot of settlers in the church. You settle for this and you settle for that. Knowing that God has blessed you and knowing that God has gifted you greater than where you are, but you just settle. So, oh, that's enough. I don't need to do no more than that. I don't need to give no more than that. This, uh, the mediocrity uh, is a state of life. You decided that I've done all I need to do and I'm going to be okay with that. Like it is on my job sometimes because I work for the government. They say that's good enough for government work. But is it good enough for you? Is it, is it at the level or the quality of what you are capable of? Not just good enough. Hallelujah. So stop selling when you know God has called you to be more. Stop selling when God has given you all of these gifts. God has given you all of these talents and you settle. Ah, uh, shame on you to settle with all the gifts you have. Shame on you to settle with all the talents that God has blessed you with. Shame on you that you would put your life in a position of mediocrity when you know and God know you are much more than that. You can do much more than that. You are qualified and capable of doing much more than what you decide you would do. Ah, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I, I, I felt that. I felt, I felt that. It hurts me to know that, watch this, watch this. Being a preacher, uh, being, being one who proclaimed the gospel, it hurts me to my core to, to know this. Watch, watch, watch what the verse says uh, in verse 2. He says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Uh, the, the Bible says that the word preached did not profit or benefit them. And so I, I, I would have to explain real quickly that um, profit is what you have left when the transaction is over. Uh, that, that, that's what profit is. If you break even, if you come out in a negative, that, that's, that, that's not profit. Profit is taking your assets, subtracting your liabilities, and what you have left over after the transaction is done, that's your profit. Ah. I'm going to hurt somebody in just a minute. Out of, out of all the circumstances, out of all the situations you've been through, how much you got left over? Out of all that life has sucked out of you, do you have anything left over? Glory to God. It is, it, it's not what you got. That, that's not what profit is. Profit is what you got left over after the transaction is complete. I want to help us this morning because if you don't have anything left over, then you have no benefit. If you don't have anything left over, then you, you didn't profit. You ain't got nothing left, then you lose. Glory to God. But we know in God that we are winners. All we do with God is, is win. So in that case, we must have something left over when it's all said and done, when the sum total is added up, we gotta have something left over. But the words say, the words say, the word was preached, but it did not 
profit them. Ah, right. I'm going to stay there for a minute. Because I, I've been sick. Why I didn't want to get out of bed. Glory to God. I, I've been knocked down uh, so many times that I, I did not want to get up. But when the sum total was all added up, I still had some strength left. I still had some, some joy left. So when they took all of my assets and all of my liabilities and got to the very end, there was profit because I still had some peace left. Glory to God. I still had something left that I could give. Uh, your house can burn down and your car can be repossessed. But guess what? You still got something left. Uh, your husband or your wife can just walk out on you, but you still got something left. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere this morning. Matter of fact, they can give you a pink slip or lay you off or put you out on furlough. But guess what? You still got something left. Well, right now, if you got something left, give God some praise all over this building. Give God some praise right in your living room, amen. No matter what's been taken, no matter what's been uh, pulled from you, if you got something left, oh my God, if you got something left, no matter how much it is, if there's still profit, glory to God, then give God some praise. I give him praise because I still got something left. No matter what they take, no matter what I lost, when I look at the bottom line, I still got something left. Woo, glory to God. Glory. I still got a little health. I still got a little strength. I ain't got much strength as I used to have. Not as strong as I used to be. Not as fast as I used to be. But guess what? Still got a little strength left. Not as tough. Ha. Not as strong. Ha, not as fast. Guess what? But some of us can say, but I'm still here. Life put a whoop on some of us, but we're still here. So I still got something left. Glory to God. Ah, oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Ah, that thing got me a little turned on this morning. Been through hell, but, but I still got something left. Made some mistakes, but I but I still got something left. Amen. Almost died, but I still got something left. Woo, glory to God. Ah, uh, yes, God, yes, God. I still got something left. Woo! Hallelujah. Watch the scriptures as they twist us. Watch the scriptures as they um, help to develop us in this area where he says the word was preached. But it, but it did not, did not profit them. Uh, this is the part I like. Now this is this is the part I like. Watch this. Watch this. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Huh. Uh, that that's gonna hurt you. I thought the problem was the word being preached. Hmm. But as we read farther, we find out that the problem is not really the preached word. When we read farther, we find out the problem was not being mixed with faith. Hmm. So no matter how clear God's word is, it's still got to be mixed with faith. No matter how much God's word is preached, it's still got to be mixed with faith. No matter how it comes or who it comes from, it's still got to be mixed with faith. You got to have some faith to believe in this word. Glory to God. Everybody can hear the word, but do you have faith enough to believe this word? It's just like when the, when the sower goes out to sow seed. And the sea is scattered on all different types of ground. It only profits or benefits when it's sown in good soil. Not among thistles and not on 
hard ground. But when it's sown in, in good soil and fertile soil, does the seed profit? Glory to God. So this morning, as that word go forward, you got to mix it with faith to cause it to work in your life. The word is the word all by itself. But the Bible says it didn't profit them. And it didn't profit them not because it was not the word. It didn't profit them because they did not mix it with faith. Woo! Faith. You got to have faith to make this word work. Oh my God. Yes God. Yes God. You hear folks saying and don't take this personal. I've learned and lived long enough after pastoring uh, this church for over 10 years. Folk will come and tell you something like, well, pastor, I'm going to be moving on from this church because I'm not getting the word. I thought that would bother me. And I, I thought that would somehow um, discourage me. But over the years, I've learned that it ain't a word. Because if you got 10 children and you feed them all the same food and nine of them are growing and one is not, the problem is not the food. Glory to God. It's the fact that somebody chose not to eat the food that was prepared. So as folk may come and go and leave and change their mind on whatever God may be telling them, I know it's not the word because the word works. You just got to have the opportunity and the ability to mix it with faith huh? to make it work for you. Glory to God. You can't be moved and shaken by every wind of doctrine and the next hot thing that comes along. Know who you are and know who God called you to be. Sit yourself down somewhere and hear the word of God. Mix it with faith and live according to the word. Glory to God. Because I know the word. And I know it works. Hallelujah. So I just want to say when God sends this word out mm, it's like a scientific event where every action requires a reaction. Now I'll explain that. Every, every action requires a reaction. God sends his word. Glory to God. And if you don't send your faith out to mix with the word, then you don't get it. So the action when God sends his word, the reaction is we send our faith and we take our faith and we mix it with God's word and then it profits us. It benefits us. You made a cake. You took all the ingredients. You took the egg and the flour and the sugar and the butter and you just laid it all out there. It profits you nothing. It, you want to make a cake, but it benefits. Those are all the ingredients, but it benefits you not. Until you take that cake, all of those ingredients, and most of us nowadays have a mix. But when I was growing up, we didn't, we didn't have a mixer. My mama, she would get a big mixing bowl. And she'd put it in her arm. And she'd get one of them big wooden mixing spoons. And she'd put the flour and the sugar and the butter. And then and, and she, she cracked the eggs and she, she put in the eggs. And, and she began to take those ingredients. And she began to mix them and she began to turn them. And she be, it took some work, it, it took some strength, it took some courage. But she beat it and she beat it and she mixed it until it all blended together. All of those ingredients mixed together begin to make the batter for the king. But independently, they don't make a king. I'm going somewhere. You got to take this word 
and mix it with faith to cause it to work for your life. We want this word to profit you. We want this word to benefit you. So when God sends his word and you send your faith and you mix them together, whoo, hallelujah, then there's a benefit. Then there's a, there's a profit. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere this morning. See if I can do what we can to hasten the close. Of Some mornings my wife get up and we're kind of in a hurry for work or trying to get out of the house and rather than cooking breakfast, she set up for a, a little protein shake. And on the, and on the bottom of the glass of the protein shake, it says, um, shake well. Glory to God. Every ingredient for a well-balanced breakfast is in the bottle. But the ingredients have settled at the bottom. So the instructions on the bottle says, shake well. Ah, if, if, if you don't mix it up, watch this, watch this. If you don't mix it up, you will drink off the top of it, but you won't get the blessings that are settled at the bottom. You can just drink off the top. But if you don't mix it up, if you don't shake it up, then you're going to miss out on the blessings that are settled at the bottom. Glory to God. But if you mix it, if you shake it, if you get all those ingredients working together, if you get the word and you get faith and you mix it and get it all working together, then it will benefit you. But if you just drink off the top, just take the blessings off the top. All of the benefits that's in the bottom you will miss. All the benefits that's in the bottom you're not going to profit from. Hallelujah. God says to us this morning, I'm going to bring the word. You bring the faith. And I'll mix them together. And when it's mixed with faith, you'll profit. When it's mixed with faith, you will benefit. God, I thank you. Because your word said they who heard it, it didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. They didn't, they didn't mix it with faith. And, and so, so some folk miss out on the promises of God because they didn't mix your word with faith. They didn't believe your word. Your word was true all by itself. But we got to believe it. We got to have faith enough to stand on it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. So take your faith and mix it with God's word. Yes, God. His 66 principles, 66 books, 66 great oratorical instructions for us to live. Yes, God. Mixed with faith. Mixed with faith. That's how we're going to live. That's how we're going to survive. And that's how we're going to profit. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. I hope this word has blessed somebody. I hope this word is resonating in your spirit that you'll have an opportunity to share this word with someone on your job or someone in your family. Don't just keep it to yourself. Take this word and spread this word. Take this gospel and share this gospel. Mix with faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this word has blessed you. I pray this word was what you needed for this morning. If there's someone out there under listening to my voice and you've never said yes unto the Lord, you don't know anything about serving the Lord and giving your life to the Lord, let me encourage you this morning. The Bible says in the book of Romans that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So I want to encourage you this morning on this second Sunday in this brand new year of 2021, give your life to the Lord. 
Give your life to him and allow him to be the Lord of your life. Allow him to be your savior. Allow him to be your God. Confess your faults to him. Confess your sins to him. And then confess that he is Lord. And know that God sent him to die for you. To give his life that you might have life. So God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. I pray you have prayed that prayer, amen, and have turned your life over to the Lord. So when you get ready to leave this world, when you breathe your last breath, we know that heaven shall be your home. Just a couple of announcements real quickly, amen. I pray that by now you have downloaded our PHMBC app. You can go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store. Download our app so you can share the information that we're giving to you. Our Sunday sermons are there. Our Bible study lessons are there. Our Sunday school lessons are there. Other information that we're sharing with our congregation at large, even as we talk about um, coming back into in-person worship service on February the 7th, amen. We're looking for everyone to be here, amen. See your smiling faces to look all over this building and see just how good God has been. Even during this pandemic, we will continue to social distance ourselves, continue to make sure that we are sanitizing our hands, amen, wearing our face covering. But we want to lift up the name of the Lord. It's been a long time that we have been together. We've been doing social media, amen. We've been doing uh, virtual church, but on February the 7th, the first Sunday in the month of February, amen, as these spikes move and go, we're praying, amen, that God will allow us to come back together for in-person worship, that we can lift up the name of Jesus and continue to give God all the glory and all the praise. Well, God bless you on this morning. God bless you on this morning. Let me just ask why you're out on the app. If you would, please, ma'am, please, sir, um, there's a give button. If you would just mash that give button, continue to sow into ministry, we know that you are sowing into good ground. We know that every seed that you sow, amen, is being used for ministry here at this church, amen, and even to go out and bless others, amen. So we just pray that you'll continue to do what you've been doing, amen. If you have not been consistent in your tithe and your offering, we want to encourage you in this year. Please, ma'am, do all that you can to bless the Lord. Do all that you can to bless ministry. And for those of you who can go above and beyond that, amen, I know God will be pleased, and we are pleased as well. So we thank you in advance for what you shall do to help move the kingdom forward. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And then let me just say this unto you. We look forward for Tuesday night, amen, at 7 o'clock for our Bible study session, amen, our Bible study hour, where we're going to continue to be talking about the word, and we're going to continue to be talking about faith. So get ready for a good series, amen, on the word and on faith, on how God is blessing us, moving us, and speaking to us. And I pray this word this morning, mixed with faith, hallelujah, mixed with faith, amen, has touched your life and has moved you in a mighty way. God bless you, God keep you, it's my prayer. Well, let's look into the Lord to be dismissed, and we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday right here on Facebook Live. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning, God. We thank you for all our eyes have seen, and we thank you, Lord God, for all our ears have heard. We pray, God, that you'll continue to bless us, continue to hold us in the heart of your hand, continue to cover us and protect us during this pandemic and during this dangerous season. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, and the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And I'll see you on Tuesday. Amen.